All right, boys, so as you all probably know by now, a few days ago, we as a community came together to finally solve the Corridors of Time puzzle. Or if you're like me, you just sat around and waited for someone else to do it. And for our efforts, we were rewarded Bastion. Now, I know the memes right now over the puzzle and this gun are hot, and I will admit I have been thoroughly enjoying them. Maybe a little too much, actually. But it's time to get down to business and see if Bastion performs and if it's even worth getting for more than just completing the Savior title. I'm going to go over what I believe to be the best PvE and PvP loadouts if you really want to use this gun, and then giving my thoughts on the weapon at the end. But if you are new, and only if you enjoy the videos, then be sure to subscribe. Also, I live stream daily over on twitch.tv slash myfile with an underscore at the end, so come over and give me your thoughts on this thing. Okay, let's get into it. So, I'm not even going to go over how to get this exotic, as there's about a million guides on it already, so I'm just going to jump straight into the weapon itself. It is an exotic fusion rifle that sits in the kinetic slot and uses special ammo. For the perks, well, in column 1 we have hammer forged rifling for a flat increase to range. In column 2 we have liquid coils for an increased damage and a slower charge time. In column 3 we have breakthrough, which states a portion of this weapon's damage bypasses elemental shields. Column 4, we have Composite Stock, which is going to increase stability and handling speed. Then finally, the exotic perk, Saint's Fist, which states Charge to Fire 3 Kinetic Slugs. Now, at first, when hearing these perks, well, I was super confused. I was curious as to the perk Breakthrough when it said it bypassed Elemental Shields. I assume because, you know, it's an exotic, if an enemy had an Elemental Shield, then it would just completely ignore it and go directly for the health bar. But after getting it in hand, I quickly realized this was not the case. It's best compared to weapons that can equip the anti-barrier mod that, you know, you can shoot like anti-barrier rounds. As we all know, with anti-barrier rounds, when an enemy with an elemental shield takes damage, instead of it just bypassing the shield completely, it does a small amount of damage to the enemy, but still most of the damage coming from the gun will go into breaking that enemy's shield. Now the other perk I was also confused on was the exotic perk. Like I had to recheck to make sure this thing was actually a fusion rifle and I didn't misread it and it was like a shotgun because it states slugs, which we have never seen on a fusion rifle before. I finally realized each slug is actually just a cluster of bolts, seven bolts per slug to be exact and three slugs in one burst. And if my math is correct, and I pray it is because I lost my calculator last week, that's 21 bolts in a burst. And then I realized it takes only one ammo per burst. And with this holding four ammo in a magazine, well, that's a total of 84 bolts without having to reload. Now onto the loadout I have been using inside of PPE. And well, I'm not going to lie. It got pretty difficult to find what to pair this weapon with. As we all know, in order to make a viable PVE loadout, a person needs three things. An ad clear weapon for low tier minor ads, a weapon for group clear slash single target damage for things like major enemies, and finally a high damage weapon for things like bosses. And as we all know, it gets even better if a weapon overlaps these three things. I did make a video going more in depth about all this, so if you're confused by what I mean, then you can go check that video out. As soon as I got my hands on Bastion inside of PvE, I immediately realized that it definitely fits the role of single target damage very well, but falls kind of short on the whole group clear thing. If you want an example of a weapon that fills that spot perfectly, then think of things like grenade launchers and machine guns. Good for taking out large groups of adds and also putting majors down. So after some messing around, I decided to pair it with my Last Hope as Last Hope does a fantastic job with ad clear. If you don't have a good roll Last Hope, then I recommend Recluse or just any energy weapon that takes primary ammo as you're not going to want to run two weapons that take special ammo to prevent you having to split ammo between Bastion and, you know, that other weapon that you may choose. So just stick with an energy weapon that takes primary ammo. Now, speaking of ammo, I also realized if I'm going to want to keep Bastion stocked with ammo, well, I'm going to have to do something I swore I would never do. Run Solar Affinity Armor for the mods, especially the Fusion Rifle Scavenger mod. Now, because I'm being forced to run Solar Armor, well, that means running something like a grenade launcher or machine gun is pretty much out of the picture due to grenade launcher mods being tied to Void and machine gun mods being tied to Arc. At this point, I had Bastion for single target damage, 
Last hope for ad clear, but now for my power weapon. I needed something that was linked to solar as power weapon ammo is always a must. I quickly looked at what was linked to solar mods and it came to me, right? It just came to me, lying in the sand. This linear fusion rifle can hold its own even to massive damage dealing weapons such as Izanagi's. And not to mention, I could now run both fusion rifle and linear fusion rifle scavenger mods. Now, with the loadout in mind, I took it into some strikes, and I'm not gonna lie, this loadout actually performed very well. For the most part, I had my last hope out, just, you know, clearing up ads, but when I would run into a major, well, the Bastion would immediately come out, cleaning up most majors in one burst, and if not, well, then a second burst would always do it. Line in the Sand also performed very well for boss damage, especially one with Firing Line and Rapid Hit. Now, yes, even though this loadout is good, well, it's specifically made to use Bastion. When putting this loadout next to a loadout like Izzy, Recluse, slash, you know, a good roll last hope, and Wendigo, well, you can probably already guess what's coming out on top. But if you are set on using Bastion, then I think this is the best loadout you could possibly go with, in my opinion. Now, moving on to PvP, and well, I will keep this part much shorter than the PvE side. Bastion is good, right? There you go. I said it, right? I said it. I said it. It's good. It's a good weapon in PvP. Once you stop treating it like a fusion rifle and more like a shotgun with a charge, well, it starts performing very well. It takes down anyone you see as long as you're within range and hit them with just one of your slugs. Not one burst, but one slug. And you got three slugs in one burst. So that means if you were to get lucky enough, well, you could potentially take down three guardians in one burst. But like I said, you'd have to get really lucky. Since it is a hard hitting weapon, I decided to pair it with another hard hitting weapon, the curated kindled orchid. I have seen some people also pairing this with the waking vigil as well. 150 RPM hand cannons are very popular right now, but I decided on the kindled. Even though Bastion is very consistent with killing guardians in one burst, you will from time to time get someone down to about one health or pretty much just, you know, one hit. And at that point, pulling out the Kindle to finish them off, then popping a reload, and then being able to two tap anyone to the dome with kill clip and rampage active, it just feels powerful. For my power weapon, well, I just used any old grenade launcher, but you could really use whatever you want. I did not, however, bother using solar affinity armor for the mods as I found the special ammo scavenger that can be equipped on any affinity of armor to work out quite nice. Plus, I refuse to switch from transversive steps and I only have arc ones, so yeah. All in all, I feel this is a legitimately powerful loadout when it comes to PvP. Like, I could actually use this loadout and not feel like I was at a disadvantage. To be honest, yeah, you should definitely go after this weapon. A, it's a very unique weapon. I mean, it's a fusion rifle that's in our, you know, kinetic slot, which we've never had before. B, it's pretty strong in Crucible. And C, all memes aside, it's linked to one of the coolest community puzzles in all of Destiny. It took a group effort to get this thing. And I honestly, I had no part in it. I'm just sitting here reviewing the weapon. And there you go. That is, in my opinion, the best loadouts to run with Bastion in both PvE and PvP. If you have some loadouts of your own, then be sure to drop them in the comment section below as I would like to know. The rest of the video is going to be some PVP gameplay with the loadout I mentioned in the video because honestly, I find it to be actually very fun. If you did enjoy the video, then be sure to drop a like and I will catch you all in the next one. Peace. Zone B lost. Power play. Enemy has your zone. Zone A captured. Zone advantage is yours. Zone C lost. <laughs> the enemy has gained ground, but it's not over. Don't see.
captured. Zone advantage is yours. Pressure on. Well done. You have to leave. Zone A lost. Don't see lost. Only five minutes left. Together as one. I love it. You captured zone C. You have zone advantage. Zone B captured. Power play. Keep the pressure on. Zone A lost. Zone C lost. is yours. Triple down. Three minutes remaining. Don't see lost. Just took the lead. You captured zone C. You have advantage. Zone A lost. You're defeated. Fight again. Persistence is key. No, not this time. Controlling those zones is the only path to victory. <laughs> 